Hello, in this video I will show you how to set up the clients in Cinema Remote Connect, our system for easy remote access. This requires that Cinema Remote Connect server has already been set up. I already explained how to do this in another video. In order to simplify setting up the clients, for example, devices and users, later on, it's useful to first create a group concept. That's where user and device groups and their communication relationships, for example, the access rights to each other, are created. In the Cinema Remote Connect server, you can create as many groups as you'd like. Users or devices are then assigned to these groups. Through cleverly selected groups, a new user is then automatically assigned all access rights to which they are entitled. You can extend the group concepts as you like. I create the group concept in the Cinema Remote Connect server. I log on to the server and open up the menu item Remote Connections and the sub-item Participant Groups. I create a new group with the name User and save it. Then I create another group for the end devices and call it Devices. Now I can assign the group User access rights to the group Devices. To do this, I open Actions Communication Relations of the User group and select the Devices group. Under Communication Relations, I can check the settings. To do so, I click Communication Relations and see that our users can access the devices. If they want to access machines that have identical IP addresses and subnets, for example, series machines, you must use the NAT function of the Cinema Remote Connect server. Under System VPN Address Spaces, I activate the checkbox, Network Address Space. Please check with your IT administrator in advance whether this address space is available. If this address space is already in use, you can adjust the addresses as you like. Now I can start to create the clients. I'll start with a device. I want to integrate and commission the 5G mobile wireless router Scalens MUM856-1 from my control cabinet. A Cinema RC plug is already installed in the router. The plug unlocks the license for the use of Cinema Remote Connect and also saves the configuration. If the router ever needs to be replaced, the plug is simply plugged into the replacement device and the configuration that was previously saved is used on the new device. The remote maintenance connection should only be established when required. The connection is activated via a key switch on the control cabinet. The active VPN connection is indicated by a warning lamp. Under Remote Connections slash Devices, I create a new device and call it MUM856 underscore 1. I assign a secure password for the VPN connection with at least 8 characters using special characters, numbers, and upper and lower case letters. As type, I choose my built-in Scalance MUM856-1 mobile wireless router. Under Connection Type, I select Digital Input. This means that the VPN connection is only established when required, for example, when the key switch on the control cabinet is activated. If you don't want to use the Digital Input on your router, please select the Permanent option. Under Network Settings, I now define which subnets or even single IP addresses should be reachable via the router. I recommend that you uncheck Device is a Network Gateway. Then you do not have to configure any further settings for the devices accessed via the router. In my example, I want to limit access to the switch, Scalens XB208, and the WLAN access point, Scalens W774. First, I create a subnet name, Cabinet. I enter the subnet IP and mask of the plant network. Then I select the one-to-one -one NAT mode. Then I add the two end devices with their IP addresses. In order to be able to access them later, I have to assign them to the device group, Devices. Now my router is successfully created. Under Information, I can display a summary of the device information. 
I still need this information to set up the router. Therefore, I leave the tab open. My router, Scalance MUM856-1, is now created on the server. Now I can start configuring the hardware. This means my router in the control cabinet. I connect my laptop directly to the device via LAN cable. I use the switch installed in the control cabinet. I have already configured my network adapter to match the subnet. I open the default IP address of the Scalance router 192.168.1.1 in the browser. Many browsers display a message at this point that the connection is not secure. This is because the Scalance router uses a self-signed certificate. But you can still continue with this process step. The message disappears as soon as the web server certificate of the Scalance router has been imported to the browser. However, this is optional and has no effect on the functionality. You can find information about certificates in the manual. The first time I log in, I use the username admin and the password admin. Then I have to assign a new secure password. Now the basic wizard opens. Here I have to enter the IP address of the router that is intended for it in the plant network. In my case, it is the default address of the router. Optionally, I can now assign a system name and further information. I call my device Scalance MUM856-1 5G router. In the SIM tab, I have to enter, if available, the PIN of the SIM card and activate the mobile wireless interface. In the next step, I take over the date and time from the PC of my Scalance router. I recommend that you use an NTP server. This ensures that your device always uses the correct time. A correct time setting for the clients and the server is very important, because the generated certificates are valid for a limited time and could be rendered invalid if the time is incorrect. In the Cinema Remote Connect tab, I enter the address of the server. I use the DNS address of the server cinemarcserver.dyndns.org. Alternatively, I can also enter a public static IP address for the server. If the port of the HTTPS access was changed during the server setup, it must be entered in the next field. From the Cinema Remote Connect website, I now copy the fingerprint and the device ID. Now I enter the password I assigned to the device and server. Finally, I activate the Cinema Remote Connect settings. In the last step, I can check them again. The warning light for the VPN connection should be activated from the digital output of the router. For this purpose, I activate the VPN tunnel under System Events Digital Out. Under Information, Cinema RC, I can check the status of the connection. The connection status is pending because the key switch on the control cabinet has not yet been activated. In the last step, I have to create a remote maintenance user in the Cinema Remote Connect server. I create a new user under User Accounts. I call this user Service Technician. Further entries for the user are optional. In the Rights tab, I can assign additional rights to the Service Technician for the server. Here, I also activate Download Client Software so that I will be able to make the client software easily available to my user via the server. To make it easier to manage the rights of multiple users, you can define roles that assign specific rights. New users are then assigned a role and automatically receive the rights profile saved for that role. You can also make it mandatory that initial passwords have to be changed on the first login. In this way, you can ensure that only the service technician knows their own password. I add the service technician to the user group and set a secure password. This completes all the setup steps in the server. The server technician can now access the router in the control cabinet as soon as the key switch is activated. 
To do this, however, the service technician also needs the client software installed on their local computer. This and the associated licenses can be distributed centrally via the server. For this purpose, I upload the Cinema Remote Connect client software to the server. The service technician then receives a link to the server with the login information and can download, install, and use the client software. I would now like to show you how the system actually works. As a service technician, I connect to the Internet, start the previous installed Cinema Remote Connect client, and log in by entering the username Service Technician and my password. In the mask, I see the Scalance router. I can't access the entire network, but only the two Scalance devices that have been activated for me. The router is currently offline. An on-site machine operator activates the key switch at the control cabinet in order to permit a remote maintenance connection. The router then establishes a VPN tunnel to the server. As soon as the tunnel has been completed, the warning lamp lights up. In the Cinema Remote Connect client, I can see that the router is now online. To connect to this exact device, I select NAT Connection Mode and click Connect. As soon as the tunnel is established, the display switches to connect it. Now I can connect to the web-based management of the Scalance components and perform remote maintenance. As you can see, client setup is very simple. I have set up and created our 5G router Scalance MUM856-1 and a service technician user with the required access rights. The Cinema Remote Connect client software and the licenses have been made available to the user via the server. The service technician can now connect to the Scalance router and perform remote maintenance if necessary and in consultation with the machine operator on site.